One man planted, another man watered, and another caused it to grow. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about knowing your role in the body of Christ. So, let's have a chat. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here because it's time for a weekly chat. Before we jump right in, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, the icon, all the good stuff that I'm going to put right here. Make sure that you join the family today. Okay, now to the video. One of the most important lessons I've learned is knowing the importance of timing and being positioned in the right place to fulfill God's purpose for your life. And I feel like this video will really resonate with a lot of people who maybe God has called into a leadership role because I feel like there's not a lot of emphasis on teamwork. I think great leaders know that, but we also live in a society where it's very, very much hustle culture. Just go, 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 go. I did this by myself, type of vibe. I came up from the mud, I did it all by myself. You get what I'm saying, like I feel like we live in that society where individuality is kind of praised, like self-made millionaire, self-made billionaire, all that stuff, when realistically that's not, it's not real. Everybody needs a little help here and there. And it, this is the one that I really, really have to like sink in because like that hustle culture will really get to you and feel like I have to do this all by myself and you don't want to ask for help from people and it's just like, if you want to be a good leader, if you want to be the person that God called you to be fully, you're gonna one have to get out that mentality and then also pray to God that God sends you the right people that are gonna help you get there because nobody has gone through this journey, nobody has survived this journey of life by themselves. Like, and I'm gonna use a pastor as an example. When the church starts, most churches they probably start with like a few families, maybe like 10, 15 people if they're lucky, or even a company. When a company starts, it does start as one individual or maybe like two people that start a company together. However, if it continues to scale and you still feel like you want to fill in every single role, you want to fill in every single position, like you can't be the pastor of a church and be part of the worship team and be part of the finance team and be part of the cleaning team and be part of the um, what other team that they're at and be part of the tech team. Like you can't be everything at once same thing with the ceo in the beginning you're doing all the grunt work but as you begin to grow as god begins to take your journey your business and everything to a next level you're gonna get to a point where you're like i can't do all this by myself let me get people who know how to do this well pay them outsource them that way you can fulfill the role that you need to do well and this is a touchy one too because i know that i definitely experienced this way like the way I was running my business when I started is not the way that I'm running my business now. And this is one that I'm telling my business out there, but whatever. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, Kemi has switched up or Kemi has changed. And it's just like, I can't run the business the same way I was on day one as I am year. How many years have I been doing? year six into it. If I keep running the business the same way I do on day one as I am in year six, the business is not going to grow to what it needs to be. And that's one thing that God is even teaching me, like, girl, step back. I think the reason why we honestly also want to feel that I did this all by myself role is so we can say I did this all by myself. I think we feel like if we have teams, if we have people that help us, like we're no longer the creator of it or we're no longer the face of it or our contribution is diminished because it was done by a team and not just you. And one thing that I know with a lot of companies is they often have a face of a brand, but there's a whole team that is working behind them and as we're all called into different leadership roles whether that be at work at church or whatever the case might be please please know your role do not negate teamwork teamwork is not a bad word teamwork is not a bad thing know the role that god wants you to be in and do it well another thing is when we're trying to fill all these roles and we're trying to fill in every single box like every single event at church you're there every single event at work you're there when you try to do that and you do it so thin, which I'm probably going to make a video about this next week called knowing the difference between what is right and what is good. When you're trying to do everything, something is going to suffer and you're not going to do your role to the best of your ability because you're trying to fit in every single role. When God is like, girl, I have this role for you. How about you do this and you do it well? That's the role that God has for you. And I really feel like the telltale sign if something is functioning well is like, if the leader of that organization can step away, and not in a way where their presence is not missed, but they should still be able to step away and that organization does not crumble or that organization does not like fall to the ground because the leader is not there. A CEO should be able to go on vacation and come back and know that his company is still there. A pastor should be able to go on a mission trip and know that he's gonna come back and his church is still gonna be there. He's not gonna come back and now the usher lady quit, the choir leader wants a different church, the parking lot ministry, they parked the car in like two streets over and now got towed. The leader should be able to leave something and know that they've left a good system in place. And I think it's so important to know like 
you really have to know your role and i learned this from my pastor because he knows when to delegate things away he knows i can't do it all but he will pick some good qualified people to fit those roles and he would do it well and this is a time to really pray to god to be like god who are my helpers i feel like we're all called to be helpers to somebody in some way or another ask god to reveal to you your helpers as you're going as these leadership roles and now i'm going to go into scripture really quick and that is first corinthians 3 verse 6. this is when apostle paul was speaking to the church of current corinthians and they were talking about oh i'm a follower of apollos i'm a follower of paul and they were kind of like picking sides and in verse 4 you hear him say when one of you says i'm a follower of paul and another says i follow apollos aren't you acting like people of the world and then he says we're all servants of god but the verse that i really really want to highlight is verse 6 where it says i planted the seeds in your heart Apollos watered it but it was God who made it grow. And when I read verse 7 and a little bit of verse 8 where it says it's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And I'm going to go a little bit into service in the body of Christ a little bit now. And one of my main messages that I really really want to convey in this video is that you might not always be on the front line but your work is just as valuable. Another thing that I've kind of had to tell myself when it comes to service especially in church and all that is I don't always have to be the frontline person. I've learned to sometimes just sit and observe and sit and just do the little backstage crew stuff. I think sometimes in church it's so easy to feel like I have to be either the choir or the usher, let's say the pastor's PA, ministries that are very, very visible. I think a lot of times we feel like I need to be there so people can know me and that's a very, very, that's a little touchy because whatever we should be doing, we should be doing it for the glory of God, not for ourselves to be glorified or not to be known as, oh, she's the girl that does really, really well in the usher ministry, or she's the girl that sings really, really well in the choir. I think it's so key, especially in church, to know that we don't have to be in those ministries that are very out there in your face, but still know that we're bringing value to the body of Christ. I serve in a ministry that's kind of visible, and one thing that I kind of even do to myself just to be like overly cautious, like if I've been on camera for like two, three weeks in a row or something like that, I go into my little hiding space. I don't want it to be a thing where I tell myself of like, I need to be up there front and center for God to know that I served him or for people to know that I'm serving. Because I think a lot of times when we do that, we're not really doing it, check me if I'm wrong, a lot of times when we feel like we have to be in those front row positions, again going back to leadership and feeling like you have to be at the front and center, I think a lot of times we're doing it so other people can know and not for the glory of God. And that's why when it comes to like leadership roles, either in my business or the church, I'm learning that it's okay to have help, it's okay to not be in the front line and know that God is still getting his glory at the end of the day. It's not so important for me to be right front and center so everybody can know, oh, she was part of this project. I don't always need to be on screen. I could be in the rolling credits though, and I'm okay with that. And that's why I love verse 8 where it says, the one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. There shouldn't be a collision of, oh, I have to be here so that my work is valuable. As long as you're working for the same purpose to build the body of Christ and bring God glory, that's all that matters. And I think about this when it comes to like a relay race. There's one person that ultimately crosses the finish line. However, that person will not cross the finish line if the other people did not do the work. The other people still have to run their race and give the baton to the next person and then give to the next person before that person can finally finish the race. All those people work together for the same purpose to finish that race. While it was one person that crossed the finish line, it does not demean the work of the other people because that person could not have gotten there if the other people did not run. They could not have just started at that point and just be like, I want to finish the race. They would get disqualified. So a point that I really just want to emphasize is just make sure that working for the same purpose is at the center of your mind and not so much of I have to be in this exact place. Be Maybe I should switch the title to be comfortable in your role. I might switch the title to that. I think about it with the church. There are ministries that like they're hidden. They're not so out there, but their work is very, very valuable to the church. God didn't make a mistake when he maybe called you to that certain ministry. And I also want to touch on this for people that are praying for other people in their life to maybe know Christ. I think another part of this is oftentimes you want to plant the seed, water it, and expect the fruit right then and there. I think one thing that I'm kind of letting go of in my faith is control. I like to be a... Uh, I want to see the end result. I want to see that this person came to Christ. I want to see that this prayer was answered. 
And I think sometimes we think that when certain prayers go unanswered that they were a waste or maybe all the prayers that I've been doing for this person, it didn't do something. I think I heard um, Apostle Selman say, every prayer is a deposit still into your life. And I wanted to bring this up for people who maybe are praying for people to come to Christ and their family because I think it gets to that point of like, God, I'm praying, to, like I'm trying to see. It's like we plant the seed, we water it, and we almost want to be like, why aren't you growing? Why aren't you growing now? And I know this is a little bit off topic, but I think this still ties into it of like knowing that no prayer is wasted and knowing that everything is a deposit into that person. And the same way so that Apostle Paul planted it, Apollo watered it, and God caused it to grow. Also be okay with knowing that like certain prayers that are praying into these people's lives, while you might not see the evidence now, it doesn't mean that you will not see the evidence. It's okay to know that you're praying for that person and you're like, God, it almost seems like they're getting worse there's still a deposit happening and at the right time God will make that change in their life and God will cause that seed that you've planted to grow and that's why I really have to be okay with like not seeing the evidence when I want it sometimes because another part with like knowing my role is like knowing when I've done my part and I leave the rest up to God I can't be the person that's like oh I want to pray for them and now every time I send like come to church come to church I can't I can't batter them into believing in God. You have to simply do your role, which is like praying for them and like asking God to have mercy on them and all that and know that God will complete the rest of the journey. Again, back to leadership, we can't be the all-encompassing person. Be okay with planting the seed in somebody's life and letting God take care of the rest. As I remember, I even heard a story of somebody who I think somebody had said something to them and it was like years later that it finally clicked and they were able to come to Christ. But again, in that moment where you're looking at that person, you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem like anything is changing that seed was still planted and God made it grow in its own time. And now back to leadership really quick. The story that I'm going to talk about is the story of JL, of somebody who was not necessarily on the front line, but she still had a huge part in victory. And this story can be found in Judges 4. And this is when the people of Israel were turned over to a new king, and the commander of his army was a man called Sisera. And it was said that Sisera ruthlessly oppressed the people of Israel for 20 years. And then the people of Israel, they cried out to the Lord for help. And then Deborah, who was a prophet and a judge at that point, ended up calling out to Barak who told her what God said that call out 10,000 words and then basically go fight to Sarah and his people. I'm paraphrasing but you could go read the full text. And then Barak told her I will go but only if you go with me. And Deborah ended up saying very well I will go with you. And I feel like that alone is a, another topic about leadership and knowing who to call and whatnot. But the part that I really really want to get into here is when they finally got to the part where they're about to fight a game head to head it was said that God threw the team of Sisera. Let's just call his Team, like his chariots and his warriors and whatnot it was said that God threw them into a panic and they pretty much all died but Sisera escaped and Sarah ended up going to the house of a woman named JL and when he went to the house of JL he goes hey like I need to hide out and stuff like that he thought he had found like a little friendly tent to hide out on and she was like okay cool come on in she gave him a little blanket a little milk all that good stuff little did he know and then he also told her that if anybody asks from here I'm not here he thought he had found a friend no, he didn't. Anyway, when he was asleep, JL ended up taking a tent peg and a hammer and nailed it into his temple and that's how Sarah died. Gruesome story, yes, but my message here is that JL was still in the right position where she was still able to take down the leader of the commander army without even being on the battle line. She still helped with the victory without being on the battle line. Cause she could have easily been like, why is Deborah being used? Why am I not out there with Deborah? Like, why can't I be part of this? But no, she was in her house and she was able to take down the leader of the commander army. I feel like that really just emphasized the point of like, you don't always need to be on the battlefield. You don't always need to be on the front line for your work to be valuable. Your work can be valuable where you are. Know the role that God has called you to and be happy with it. She took down the leader, a person that was torturing the Israelites for 20 years. And she didn't even have to do the work. He almost came to her, took a little nap, had a little milk, thought he was comfy. And she ended him. And it truly is like one of my favorite stories in the Bible because like I can say person there are times where I felt like oh I should be this I should be in this position or I should be in this position or I should have a bigger part in this or something like that. And it's like no your role is still very valuable whether or not people will give you the clap and applause. People might not give you the clap and applause that you want but always remember that you're doing this for God. Praise that you get from people it's a nice add-on so this journey in life like I'm not gonna deny that it's nice when people compliment you. It's nice to be like oh my gosh you did such a good job in this. It's nice. We, we crave those sometimes but ultimately it should all be to bring praises to God and I think we could all take a lesson from the story of JL of just like being okay with our role being okay with our position and knowing that we are still contributing 
even if we're not necessarily on the front line and battlefield. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me. This video was a little bit all over the place, but I hope you got the main message of know the role that God has you in, know the position that God has you in, and be okay with it. It might not necessarily be on the front line, but know that your role is still valuable and know that teamwork is not a bad thing. Ask God to reveal the people that are going to help you as you're in that leadership role that God has called you to. And then also for the people with the family that they feel like they're praying and they're praying and they're praying and nothing is happening. Know that no prayer is ever wasted. And while you might be planting the seed, God is going to cause another person to maybe water it. And ultimately, God will be the one that causes it to grow. Anyway, that's it for me, y'all. I shall see you in the next one. And bye. Oh, I have not feel this forever. Oh, dear heavens.